Hello, everybody, and welcome to our co-op play of Super Dodgeball for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm Chicago Man 2008, along with my partner, Al Wentworth. What's going on, Lance? Not much, you? Uh, I just thought I'd, thought I'd do a, a co-op play, and this is what one of the games that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. All right, so before we dive into this game, let me give you a little bit of history, courtesy of our good friends over at wikipedia.org. Sorry for the pun. Well, for the plug. Super Dodgeball was released in the arcade port in 1987 and then ported over to North America in 1989. And you'll see in, in this difference here of uh, the difference between the, the Japan and the North American versions as we get into the World Cup mode. But in this game, we're going to feature two modes. I'm going to be showing you the World Cup mode, and Lance is going to show you the Beanball mode. So Lance, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Sure thing. Hello everyone, this is Armor Day 5 Sound back with another episode of something completely different right now. It's Super Dodgeball. Do you know where I'm playing the beanball mode? I can't do difficult. Dan will take care of World Cup play, he'll play on difficult. I'm not that good. I try to play on difficult, I get my butt handed to me. Are you playing against John for Team USA? You can only play as Team USA in beanball mode, so don't expect anything else. Just start off by using my power shot, and I'm getting out of here. Uh-oh. Beanball mode takes place in, in this, well, outside the school gym. Don't touch the side of the walls, otherwise you will kind of crash out. You can't do the same as in World Cup mode except that you're just playing all Team USA against each other. You can see I'm, I'm kind of hiding out right now. I'm letting them do all the work. I'm out of here. Have fun, guys. Now, I have trouble with this mode, but this is the this is a good early strategy, well easy strategy to use, I just hide and let them mosh pit and let them take care of themselves, so that's why I'm just staying over here doing this. It's a lot easier, right? You don't have to worry too much. And the best part is, if they even decide to come near me and target, I can always get ready and defend and then, yeah! I'm out of here. Uh oh. Caught it! I saw him coming after me, so that's how I knew that, yeah, I was in trouble. Let's get the ball, get out of here. Get... Oh, he's coming right for me again! Oh, that was just. You see how he bounced off the wall there? Luckily, the match went. They're just trying to get me in this match. Just stay down there. I don't need to come near me. In case you don't know, this is based on the Retro City Rampage series. If you haven't seen any of that, well, you know. I mean, they have a lot of actual games that are based off sports, to be honest. If I was a Hey, come on, I'm trying to explain to the people here. Get! There's four other guys, and you're trying to target me only. You're a jerk. Yeah, you are a jerk. Uh. Sometimes you can't win with people, can you? But yeah, we're just gonna hang out and hide out and hopefully get out of the corner. You get fire? Okay, good, I'm out of here. Hi! You're hiding in a corner like this, it's nice and safe. Come on, why do you guys take each other out already? Uh oh. Kind of, I need it. You see, I try to stay out of the mosh pit until we get down to about two or three players when I'll start being a little more active in the match. Meanwhile, I'm gonna... do the best I can. Surprisingly, this mode actually had four players! If you're playing the Famicom! Unfortunately, the four score was not released yet, so they ducked the numbers down to two! So yeah, you could have actually played three or four players compared if you had the Japanese version. You could do this with a Game Genie code or a patch on an emulator, but who has time for that these days, right? But yeah, if you, it's actually called the Kunio Kun series. You've seen that before. And they have Renegade. Yeah, River City Ransom, Nintendo World Cup, Downtown, Neketsu Kon, Kyoko. I mean, they have a lot of stuff. I believe Double Dragon 2 for Game Boy is also counted in this series. One of the newest recent ones actually having to deal with this series is actually Super Dodgeball Brawlers, to be honest. 
And it sounds like we have an elimination. Bill has been knocked out. Sam is also out already. You can see the little floaty thing on the side. I think I heard that they're doing a basketball game. So... It might be possible. I'm just trying to make sure as well. I'm just double checking also to make sure. As now you notice I'm actually starting to get involved a little bit more, but slowly. There is a uh, at least one game already on the 3DS. Like, I haven't played any of the series, honestly. Oh, you're coming for me now? Come on! Yeah, now they're getting active on each other and me, so... Oh, it's just John and... It's just Steve and me. Stop it. Stop it. Jerk. Hitting me for one. I'm gonna catch that and you're gonna get it. Come on! You jerk. Huh? You missed. Come here! Oh, you little. Did you see I bounced off the wall there? Wasn't smart. Got it. They like to hide on you, but if you time it right or you take them out, you can actually get them. This is where I had trouble, by the way. With one to one like this, this is where I always faltered. But not this time! Game set! And now I'm gonna turn over to Chicago Man so he can do his half. So I hope you have fun, and I'll see you in the ending. See his video when our guy shows it. Thank you, Lance. Now let's move on to the main event, the World Cup mode, and I'll be playing this on the difficult skill level. Before I begin each match, I'll show you the opposing team lineup and their stats. Then you'll be taken to the position screen, where you'll have the option of changing the positions of your six-man team. Also, I'll give you some differences between the arcade and NES versions as you're watching the matches, and also describe the different super throws each of your players have. First up, first round match against the USA All-Stars. Now right off the bat, the first difference is that in the arcade version, you would play as Team Japan and play against the Japanese All-Stars in round one, whereas here on the NES version, you'll play as Team USA against the American All-Stars. Right there you just saw me use Sam's regular super throw. To perform one, tap the right directional button twice, wait till he takes five steps, and then press the B button. Each of your team members have different types of super throws and also super jump throws, which I will explain as we go along. Here I use Steve to demonstrate a super jump throw. Just make sure you don't cross over the center line or go out of bounds when attempting this. First, get a 5 step running start, jump by pressing A and B together, and then B before he hits the ground. There are other offensive moves you can do during a match. You can pass the ball by first facing a team member and then press A. You can also pass to off-court team members as well if you want to try and catch your on-court opponents off guard. Pressing B while standing still just does a normal throw. Here, Tom of the All-Stars go down, ending the match, and I advance to round two to take on England. Ah, jolly old England with the famed London Bridge. Just makes me want to visit there. But anyways, back to the game. You'll notice throughout the matches, colored numbers appearing each time a player is hit. That indicates how much damage a player has taken and it will be subtracted from his total energy. You can see how much energy a player has left by looking at their energy gauge in the top center of your screen. Each bar represents four energy. When a player gets to four or less bars of energy, they will enter to a tired stage, which can give you an advantage.
Here, James is taken out by Sam, and Team USA moves on to Round 3 against India. Here we play in front of the famed Taj Mahal. A word of note about India. Even though these players don't have a lot of energy, they can take a lot of hits before being eliminated. If you can, try and make it so that Swami isn't one of the on-court players, because regular throws and regular super throws only deal one damage to him. Unfortunately, I was unable to do so. Also, as I mentioned earlier, you and your computer opponents have six-man teams in the NES version. Three on-court, and three off-court on your opponent's side. In the arcade, you have a seven-man team, with four on-court and three off-court opponents half, with the opponents later on would have up to an eight-man team. When one on-court person gets eliminated, another would take its place. Thankfully, I was able to eliminate Swami beforehand, making the match a little bit easier to manage against their team captain, Rajiv. With India's team captain eliminated, we move on to round 4 against Iceland. The match against Iceland in World Cup mode is my favorite match because not only is it being played on an ice court, but with Bill as one of my three on-court players, he's gonna make it even more fun. Ploink! <laughs> there it is right there! If an Iceland player is positioned just right after catching Bill's regular super throw, he could slide into either the backdrop or an edge of the screen, causing him to lose the ball and hit the ice on his back. Huh, that never gets old.
with Iceland defeated, I've reached the halfway point of the World Cup. Up next is China in Round 5. What a strange looking picture there. Kinda gives me the creeps just looking at it. But anyways, we're back on a good old fashioned dodgeball court against China. While this match is going on, I'll now get into the types of super throws and super jump throws your team members have. First off, Sam is the captain of Team USA. His super throw is piercing, meaning even after it makes contact with an opposing player, it will continue its movement till it reaches the opponent's end line. So there's a possibility you could hit all three on court opponents at once. His super jump throw is a straight up power throw, with the ball shaped either like a rugby ball or a football, and it can deal a massive amount of damage. Steve's super throw is a riser. After a couple of seconds of being close to the ground and possibly making contact with an opposing player, it will rise up suddenly towards the top of the screen. Steve's super jump throw is what I'm calling an accelerator. Once the ball is near the ground, it will gain speed as it's moving forward. You see me do this in reverse, where I have Steve run to his own end line, reverse jump and execute the accelerator, because this way it can gain a lot of speed and possibly be too late for the opponent to try and catch the ball. Bill's super throw is a directional changer, as you see here and in the previous match against Iceland. It will travel a certain direction, stop briefly, and then change direction. If it's done right, it can hit an opposing player on his side or possibly in the back. Bill's super jump throw is what I'm calling a head crasher. The ball will travel in the air till it's over an opposing player and then come straight down on his head. After eliminating Chow, move on to the quarterfinals against Kenya. Ah, a beautiful sunset to set the tone for a picturesque match. Don't you just love good sunsets? Anyways, against Kenya, you're going to have a little bit of a problem getting traction while doing a running start. But remember, you only need to take five running steps to initiate a super throw or super jump throw. John's super throw is a horizontal wave, meaning the ball will travel in a wave pattern until it makes contact with an opposing player or goes over the opponent's end line. John's super jump throw is a split merge type. The ball will first split into three small balls, then merge into one, and will continue to do that till it hits the ground. Randy's super throw is an end over end shaped either like a rugby ball or a football. And his super jump throw is what I call air roulette, and this one can probably give you a big advantage if it all works out. First, the ball will shrink into a small ball, and if it makes contact with an opposing player, it will send him flying from one side of the screen to a random place. If you can position the screen just right, you can make the opposing player land on your side of the court possibly giving you the opportunity to keep hitting him like there's no tomorrow. Here's another difference. In the arcade, you'd be playing against the entire continent of Africa, but with the same court settings like this. After eliminating Kenya's team captain Yemi, we move on to the semi-finals against Japan.
another difference here. In the arcade, this would be the championship match with you playing as Japan against USA on their home court. If you do win the championship, the arcade game would loop around infinitely, starting with England, followed by Iceland, China, Africa, and USA, till either time is up or your whole team gets eliminated. In the NES version, the roles are reversed, but this time you beat Japan here in the semi-finals. Mike's super throw is a vertical wave. The ball will bob up and down until it hits an opposing player or reaches the end of the court. His super jump throw is what I call an oscillator. Think of it as like connecting points on a graph. It starts high and then gradually gets lower and lower till it hits the ground or makes contact with an opposing player. After successfully eliminating Japan, we move on to the championship match against the USSR. Here we play in front of what looks like a memorial wall with a building behind it. This match is going to test your patience and nerves, especially if you're going to play the World Cup mode on the difficult skill level. All six members of USSR have high amounts of energy, so I recommend you go with Sam, Steve, or either Randy or Bill for your on-court players for Team USA.
you manage to eliminate all of USSR's on-court players with all three of yours intact like I did, the screen will start flashing and then you'll play a special match against the clone of your team, otherwise known as Team Shadow. Team Shadow's setup will be a carbon copy of how you had your team set up for the finals. The one big difference, though, is that your team will get beefed up a little. Occasionally, the screen will flash to signify lightning, so if you're sensitive to bursts of light or flashes, I'd recommend you not play this portion or have someone do it for you.
After eliminating Team Shadow, you can sit back and relax and enjoy the ending to Super Dodgeball. And there you have it, folks. There's the World Cup mode for Super Dodgeball. Lance, what do you think of the game overall? It's a lot of fun. I mean, I spent the six months trying to learn and be difficult, but I still haven't gotten it yet. Still trying to learn the jump shots, but on 3DS, it's not that easy. Well, uh, you know, it takes a while for everybody to learn, and we have our uh, we have our learning. And, uh, you know, it, it took me a while when I first learned, first learned how to play this, but... Uh, it just came, came easy the more and more I practiced and uh, learning how uh, each of the jump throws and super jump throws work and all that. Well, everybody, that's going to wrap up this edition of our co-op play. I'd like to thank uh, Lance Wetworth for helping me out with this and especially all for watching today. And don't forget to check out each of our individual YouTube channels for all the other games that we play. So until next time, this is Chicago Man 2008. This is Lance 3567 Hope you had fun and I'll see you on the next one. See you then.